Discovery Series West Africa. From Native Instruments for Contact here. In this video, we're going to go for everything you would find in the manual, but of course, better than the manual because you'll actually see what uh, everything does. So let's go ahead and start. So over here is West Africa, already, of course, installed here into uh, Contact. Right here, we have five different instrument uh, folders, percussion ensemble 12, percussion ensemble 16, single percussion and melodic instruments. Now this 12 and 16 relates to something over here. You can see 12 steps or 16 steps. So right now we have this first instrument loaded up, which is in the 12 category. So by default, it has 12 steps. These here would have 16, okay? So on and so forth. So West Africa is a collection, of course, of percussion and melodic instruments often found in West African music and the percussion ensembles, all the controls are gonna be basically the same. The single percussion will be slightly different and the melodic instruments will also be slightly different than what we see here. But once you learn the percussion ensemble, you'll basically know everything uh, you need to know. But right now we have this instrument loaded up right here. So let's start here on the front page. First up, we have our different percussion in this case. I can click it and we have different sample sets. Now that means, let's come over here to the mixer for now and I'll just mute all of this here. We'll come back here. We'll play the pattern back and change the sample set. And for this one, we have a bell as well. Okay, now for our controls over here, we have groove. And then down here we have swing. So we can change the type of groove, the kind of groove that we want to pull in with our swing knob. And that's for each of our different drums here. As you click them, you can have your different offsets for each of those notes. So I can pull the first note back that will offset everything. Or we can come up here to the individual notes and adjust those and then pull the swing in. Right, a little bit different, right? Pull it down. All right, and do that for each instrument here. Of course, change your sample set for each of those uh, different instruments. Put this on one, put this on one, pull this back here. Control click, I'm on Windows, so Command click on Mac to set those to the center. Then we have our tune, and in this case, a bell volume. So of course, Turn it up, turn it down, and the bell volume. Now if we go to something else, now in this case we have tune and a bell volume, we come to our djembe's, and now we have again our sample sets here. We have tune, and this time tap volume. Let's come over here, and mute all this here, and we'll just play back here, and we'll go for I think djembe two. Click on that drum, switch the sample set, different samples. Now here we have tap volume, right? Hear those taps? No taps. Now those taps are consistent with authentic music wherever you're playing your djembe, you know, with your actual hits, but you're also tapping along sort of with the other hand. Right. So it's more authentic to have a little bit of tap volume in there. And whenever we come to our variations here on Jimbe 2, which I think we should be on, let me go ahead and copy this pattern. Then we'll clear that pattern. I'll play back. So all of these steps are empty, but we're still getting our tap. All right. Turn that down. No taps. And back here, put a hit in, say here and here. Right, no taps, okay? So that's what tap volume is here. We're gonna get that tap. Even when there's no note uh, triggering an actual hit. All right, let me go ahead and paste that pattern back in there and come back here. So what you see in here will be slightly different depending on the exact instrument uh, that you have. So here we have decay 
This is for our solo djembe, which would be, in this case, up here. Change the decay. All right, and tune in your groove there as well. So again, this is context sensitive, depending on exactly what, uh, what you have loaded up. But all of your options are pretty, uh, pretty easy to figure out once you understand the, those few things we've already gone over. So now let's come down to the keyboard. Like many contact instruments, our keyboard is color coded. We have our patterns and look at this variation knob. Let me uh, switch this over here, actually. And we switch a different uh, key here. Switch is my variation knob. We can also just change that around however you want. So if I'm playing back in here, Next up in this case, we have our solo djembe phrases. So of course, that's just the uh, djembe. We can use our pitch wheel to take that up or down. So let me hold the key on my actual keyboard here. So more velocity, less velocity for those. Up here, again, you can look down here in this gray area, see what everything is. Also look up here, single hits, single strokes, and djembe one and two. Come back to the mixer, make sure all of these are back on. All right. And we have different hits. So bass range, Right here, R for right, that's for left. So that way you can play things in, in a more authentic manner with a left and a right hit, right? So that is your keyboard. Again, it will be context uh, sensitive to exactly what you have loaded up here, but it's all uh, pretty similar. So down here now to trigger, we have host and we have notes. So right now here in Pro Tools, we don't have any MIDI on, uh, on anything, right? So I just play back with this on host. And it plays back whatever pattern we happen to have uh, selected. Of course, you can trigger those changes with your keyboard just by clicking one note and releasing. And of course, that's also context sensitive to where we are uh, in our DAW. As you can see, whenever I start playing, my playhead is way up here now at about uh, three and beat four. I play back, it's gonna start over here. Whereas I'm at the beginning, it's gonna start, of course, from the beginning there. All right, so this is useful. For example, if you have other instruments already laid down or you're just trying to figure out what you want, we don't have to take the time to play in a bunch of MIDI or drag out MIDI uh, patterns here. We can just play back in our host, go through our variations, try to see what works. And then you could, of course, drag out your MIDI if you wanted to, which we'll get to in a minute, but also for live playback, right, where you can just switch something really quick, or you can use this to program in single note changes, so single basically triggers, you know, in your DAW. So in this case, grab my pencil tool here, and there's our pattern. You see, we don't get any playback whenever we hold down a note. It's just switching our variation because the playback is linked to the uh, host in this case. So all I have to do is say pop a note there, and then maybe come up here and pop a note here, and then pop a note here. If you look at that, clip, you'll see there's space in between these notes, all right? So if I play back now in Pro Tools with this set to host, it's gonna keep playing that pattern until another trigger is hit, all right? That's whether you're doing it live or of course you have it programmed in your DW. okay? Now we have notes. So down here on notes, with this programmed just like this, I'll play back, and as soon as that note goes off, it stops playing the pattern. So up here, 
it's gonna play it as long as that note is held down. Same thing if I'm holding down a note in here. I release it, it stops, or if I'm holding it down on my keyboard, obviously. Okay, so in this case, if I wanted to use it to, in this manner to program my DAW, I would have to make sure these notes stretch the entire portion of my track where I want them to uh, play. So in that case, be like this, we'll leave a space there, and then drag this one out, put this back on clips so you can see it a little bit easier there. So now we play back. That variation switches. It goes off because there's no note information. Comes back on. All right, makes sense. Very good. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So that's how your host and your notes work there. Now our pattern player, as you saw, it came on and went off just by holding down these keys or playing back in our host. You can also just hit the play button there and switch through your variations. We can adjust our BPM. So right now it's synced to Pro Tools, which is at 112. We can take that off a of sync. And the number you see here will depend on exactly what you have uh, loaded up. So this is going to default to 126. So even if I have this on host and I play back in Pro Tools, which again is set to 112, it's going to play back at a BPM of 126. Right. Turn sync on. All right. With sync off, I can adjust my tempo just by clicking and dragging. We can get finer adjustment here or by using these arrows. All right. So play that back. Back on the sync. Okay. So that is your pattern player and your tempo and your sync. Now on to variation. We already know quite a bit about variation here, don't we? So what this does is it's switching through our patterns here. So just click that edit button and that takes us to our pattern editor here. So as we switch through our variations, you're gonna see a few changes in here, right? Depending on the exact pattern that you have selected. That of course corresponds to these notes down here as well, either by holding them depending on what you have selected over here or by uh, triggering them in your host or on your keyboard. And that's what those are right there. Now in here, we can actually program our own patterns. It of course will come set up with uh, you know several patterns already, but you can come in here and switch things around. So these drop downs, I can copy a pattern, paste a pattern, clear a pattern, move a pattern forward or backward. So forward would be boom, it shifts everything forward in this case. Right? And that's just for that one drum there. Down here on the ensemble, we can do copy, paste, or clear the, the whole pattern if you want to uh, draw in your own patterns. But let me move this back a couple of times. There we go. Same thing for each of our different drums. If I wanted my pattern to be exactly the same between Jimby 1 and Jimby 2, I could copy it and then paste it right there. Now it's the same. I could clear the pattern on just Jimbe 2 there. And then trigger whatever I want. And if I look down here, I can see that by holding down Alt, I can get this sort of slap for the Jimbe or the close for this other drum. If I just click, I'm going to get the sort of open sound, okay, the default. If I hold down Command or Control on Windows, we'll get the uh, djembe bass hit in this case, right? So if I hold on control, let me go and clear this pattern again. Clear it, let's come over here to the mixer. Let's just mute everything so we just hear just this djembe here. Playback, we're hearing the taps. We already know about that, right? Because we have our taps set up in here. So we'll have our taps on. 
come back here, do a normal hit right here. And here. Now hold down control, put a different kind of hit in right here and right here. Right? Now because I'm using Pro Tools, I can't hold down Alt and click. If I hold down Alt and click, it just gives me a standard hit. Okay, this is something that just happens in Pro Tools because Pro Tools eats our Alt or Option key. I can click again to turn that note off. Now let me come in here just to show you this and open up Contact 5 standalone. And this should work in other DAWs, but it doesn't work in Pro Tools. So I want to point this out. So here's the standalone version of uh, Contact. We'll pull up West Africa real quick here. Any of these will work. Just grab something and throw it in. Come over here to our pattern editor now. And now if I hold down the Alt key, I can put that sort of articulation in there just by holding down Alt and clicking. Now I can play back here. So if holding down Alt in Pro Tools isn't working for you, that is why, because Pro Tools eats our Alt key. So you might want to program these in the standalone version or another DAW uh, to get those uh, different uh, articulations there. All right, but that's how this works across all of our different instruments here. Now down here, we can clear the entire pattern, which we'll do in a minute, but we also have this 112 or 116. So we can take this out to 16 steps. If we want, come back to the mixer, turn all this back on. Back to 112. Okay, so you can just click that right there to toggle that back and forth. If you want to start fresh, we can clear the pattern and we can have this on host or something. Maybe you have a loop set up and other instruments already, you know, already out there, already written to your track. Set up a loop, it might work. Have it on host, have it play back. Put this back to 112 and start programming in your hits. I could actually drag out this pattern that we just created by using this icon right here. So I'd click this, drag it out, and boom, there is our pattern that we just uh, programmed. Playback in Pro Tools. There it is. We only change this one variation here. So I go to the next variation. It's still the standard, you know, pre-programmed uh, variation. So all of these are, you know, the uh, factory uh, variations or patterns. So again, you could come in here and program your own variations quickly by clearing the pattern or simply by altering them with, uh, you know, putting in different hits or removing hits and then, of course, triggering that with your keyboard, your knob here, or, of course, programming in your DAW. Now it comes to dragging out MIDI again. So should you use host, as we did previously, just drawing in either those single triggers for our host or those longer notes? whenever it's set to notes here, well, ideally, probably in most cases, it would be a good idea to drag out your MIDI for the simple fact that, uh, let me drag out this variation here, pull this out, go to a different variation, drag that one out, different variation, drag that one out. Okay, so that is much easier to see. Let's actually pull this out. Seeing this, it's, of course, much easier to tell what's playing than if you just saw, you know, a note here, a note there. You put this back to clips, so you see what I mean here. All right, so if I saw something like this playing back in my DAW, I might not know what's playing back, whereas with this, with this pattern here, I can kind of see the hits. All right, so ideally, at least for me, uh, I would probably stick to dragging out your patterns, but you don't have to. If it makes more sense to use host, okay, you can uh, do that as well. Or you can just go to notes and hold down 
your different uh, variations like that. So then we have swing, feel, intensity, and reverb. So we already kind of know about swing. Now feel applies an intelligent randomization to the velocity and various other places to give the pattern playback a more human feel, okay? So if we turn it all the way down here, it will be sort of very quantized, very mechanical sounding, where it will be much looser up here, all right? Let's go ahead and just uh, play that back. Yeah, a little bit different, right? And then intensity, that's gonna set the main velocity of the selected pattern. Turn that down there. That's the main velocity. And these are important controls, our swing, our feel, and our intensity, because let's just leave this set, oh, I don't know, say about there. And we'll use this pattern right here. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna drag it out right there. Let me go ahead and make sure we're showing velocity here in Pro Tools. So you can see that pattern right there and the velocity is down there. Now, if I were to come in here and put my intensity way down here, same pattern, drag out that MIDI again, put it right next to it, and you can see the velocity differences uh, right there. So pretty big difference. So our intensity indeed does uh, affect what we pull out of uh, West Africa. Now let's adjust the swing and the feel, and I guess the intensity as well. Same pattern again. I'm gonna grab it, drag it out, boom. So now if we really analyze this a bit closer. And look in here now, we can see some differences in our hits. Let me just pull it back a little bit, pull this back here. So if you look at our hits, you can definitely see our feel our intensity and the swing is adjusting how our notes are hit. I mean, you can really see this in here, how those notes are stacked exactly where, you know, where they're being triggered at. If you look at that there, even up here, really, really different. Okay. So I'm mentioning that because if I have our swing, our feel and our intensity way up here while I'm playing back, all right. I drag that out right here, and then maybe we make some changes in here, right, way down low. We hear this in here. Okay, again, same pattern, same same variation. We come back into Pro Tools now and play what we drug out with our previous settings, okay? It sounds nothing like what we have in here. All right, if we go to this pattern here, right, where we had that intensity really low, and we play back in Pro Tools, adjust our intensity in here, no difference, right? Because all of that is on the actual uh, MIDI file, right? This will affect what we have in the pattern player and what we drag out. But once you drag it out, it's sort of set in stone. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now our reverb does not have an effect on what you pull out because reverb is an audio effect, not a MIDI effect. As you should know, MIDI is nothing more than data, right? MIDI doesn't make any sound uh, on its own. So for our reverb, let's put this back on host for now. We can go ahead and get rid of this stuff here. We don't need it. And we'll just play back. Reverb down. Reverb up. Simple control uh, right there. Okay. So that is your patterns page. Again, to get to it, just hit the edit button right there. So now we go on to the mixer, which is pretty self-explanatory, really. So I guess we can play back in the host because we have that set to host right there. Of course, we have things like pan. volume of each instrument hold on control and click or command on Mac set those to the center 
switch the pattern there. So come in here and adjust, adjust your levels, your panning. You can also mute solo things to hear how they sound alone there. Or of course, mute them. Self-explanatory stuff. Up here would be our solo djembe. Little phrases. All right, control click, command click on Mac. Center that out. Let me adjust it a little bit. And then down here we have the output section. I'm not gonna go into this because I already have a very long video on outputs here in contact. It focuses more on the drummer series, but everything you see in that video will apply to this as well. The basics of it are being that I already have my outputs set up here in contact. I could come in here and route these out to different channels now. Right, as such, then come into, put it on five, then come into Pro Tools or whatever DAW uh, you have and set up your stereo or mono tracks, whatever you prefer to use, audio tracks, right? And then route that into, uh, I'll just create one here just to show you. And then of course route that into your track as such. So this is going out too. If I play back here. All right, we don't have input yet, but that's because of something here in contact. Bada bing. Stop play back there. Come in here, make sure this is set up correctly for your actual output. And I actually don't need to restart. You see the input right there for that drum. So if I happen to record that, Again, assuming you have all of your drums set up. We're just going to do one. Boom, long enough, right? Then right in here, we have just that one drum that we uh, sent out of, in this case, Stereo 2. All right, so we'll that, play that back. And then you're free to mix with whatever plugins uh, that you want to put on there. All right, go ahead and delete that. Again, watch that full video. I'll be sure to link it in the description below and I'll try to throw a card up here somewhere. The basics of it are you would hit your plus, add the quantity of channels that you want, the number of channels per track. So two would be stereo, one would be mono. And of course you have multiple or wider channels than stereo but you would probably choose either mono or stereo, create those, and then I'm not gonna do it here. Then come down here and set up your uh, connections properly for the output as such. You can also name the tracks. And then the important thing, especially for Pro Tools, is come in here and save your current for all formats. Close down Pro Tools, reopen Pro Tools, and then you can go ahead and uh, route things however you want. But all of that is explained in the, uh, in the video. I'll be sure to link uh, below for the drummer series again exactly the same for any other contact instrument but that is put this back to main that is your mixer here in west africa now we'll just take a quick look at some of our single percussion here you should be instantly familiar with these because they're going to be extremely similar okay so we're here on the djembe you can see up here we have host Notes, same stuff, pattern player. So click on the drum, sample sets, grooves, tune, tap volume in this case. Come down here, click on this, groove, tune low and tune high. So a little bit different again, but that's easy to uh, figure out. Come in here to edit. Basically the same stuff here. Drop down, move pattern forward. We can swap the hands. All right, so play back. Same stuff in here, program new patterns, change it to 16th. All right, all of that stuff is essentially the same thing. Swing, feel, intensity, and reverb. Same stuff in here, change our variations down here. Change your variations as well. And drag that MIDI out as such. Play it back. Of course, that is affected by swing feel and intensity. Drag that out there, as you can see that there. 
all right? Reverb, control, all basically the same thing. We don't have a mixer in this case, all right? If we look here, we have our phrases, of course, for the djembe, and then a ton of single hits. Then down here, different instrument. Again, you can always look right here. Variations, phrases, single hits. All right, all the same stuff in here as well. All right, so that's your single instruments. No reason to uh, focus on this for too long because it's uh, essentially the same thing. We'll go on to our melodic instruments here. We'll just grab one right here. And we click on the instrument and nothing happens. Things are a little bit different, uh, a little bit different in here. Let me get rid of those patterns. So again, patterns, single notes right here. So patterns. Essentially the same stuff in here, but I play back in my DAW. It's not gonna play back. We don't have those options for note or host in here, but we do have the pattern player, the sync, and we would drag the MIDI out right here. Now, in this case, we don't have the pattern editor for our melodic instruments, but we can still drag that MIDI out in essentially the uh, same way there. Of course, swing. In this case, we have transpose. Transpose it up. Drag that out here. Right. Pull it down and drag it in again. And see that right there. Okay. So again, sync or not. All right, put that back on sync. Now we have a mapping. This is a little bit different for our melodic instruments. Let me go ahead and just get rid of this one, just so we can see that these are all essentially the same thing. Pull that in here. All right, now in this case, we have a green note up here for effects range. A little bit different, you know, but pretty easy to uh, figure out. All this stuff here, essentially the same. Now we have a balance control, right? It just depends on the actual uh, instrument. All right, but swing, intensity, and reverb, but then we have mapping, so authentic or chromatic. Authentic is going to be a heptonic scale or seven notes, right? Where we could go to chromatic, it's not going to be authentic, but you could do that uh, if you want. So on authentic, hit a black key. Back to chromatic. Just goes right up the scale. We also have our edit tuning in this case. We're on authentic now, go to chromatic, you can see that there. So authentic, different tunings we can choose. Right, come in here, adjust the tuning a little bit, half a step or so in this case, if things aren't tuned properly for you. We also have this offset here that we can draw in. So in this case, if I take, so C, Pull it up here, down, right? You can do that for all of these instruments as well, whether it's on chromatic or the authentic, just however you want, change your tunings up here uh, as well.
That's a little bit off, right? But set that up so it works well with your other instruments uh, right here. All right, so before we close this out, we'll look at the flute because it's a little bit different as well. Patterns, key switches, and single notes in this case. So variations, all of this stuff is essentially the same thing here that we saw in the other ones. Right, drag things out as such, swing. In this case, we have transpose uh, intensity. Same thing for our mapping in here. Switch things around however you want. Sync or set up your own BPM. Pattern player button there, but here we have these key switches. Again, look down below to see what they are. Lower grace note key switch there, upper. All right, so here's our notes. Single notes, of course down here is patterns. But what I can do, I play something here on my keyboard and hit a trigger. And that has to be held down. So if you want those triggers to work, you'll have to actually you know, draw those in your DAW or of course play them in. So that is everything you need to know about Discovery Series West Africa from Native Instruments for Contact. Now we'll come in here before we close things out, load up a couple different instruments just so we can sort of hear sort of uh, what they sound like. Just real quick. Pretty cool one. Not going to go through all of them just to get an idea what these things sound like. single percussion, grab something else. You can click on that, change our sample set, tune it, set the groove type, the swing, the feel, intensity, reverb. Come in here, change our patterns around. A lot of djembe's in here. I'm just sort of adding in some embellishments to the pattern. A lot of good uh, djembe's in this library. And we'll go to one more percussion ensemble, maybe a couple. Listen to some of this here.
You can add in again those embellishments with our solo djembe right here. Those phrases while we're playing back our uh, patterns there. for one more here. Let's do one more. Load that up. And we'll just put on host for now. Pretty cool. See, on these two djembe's, this pattern here, don't have anything triggering there. Tap volumes up, come here, we'll just put hit in there, one hit there, so we get our taps. Pretty cool. Maybe clear that pattern. Clear that one there. Then put in whatever you want. Alright, so that is West Africa from Native Instruments for Contact.